All right, facts. All right, let's go. We're restarting. So NBA playoff prediction time, Jonah. Let's freaking go. Actually, it's honestly better this way that we're restarting it because we were going to talk about the West, but you're really eager to talk about this Boston-Brooklyn series. So we're going to get into this, our entire NBA 2022 playoff bracket predictions. Jonah's already filled out his bracket. I'm going to fill out mine as we go along. But first of all, I guess we're going to start out the East because Jonah really wants to talk about this Boston-Brooklyn series. And it is interesting. Boston, obviously up 2-0 now after today's dub. And they put the clamps on probably one of the stronger seven seeds, you know, in the Brooklyn Nets. Katie couldn't do anything. Boston puts the clamps on. They got hot late. What did they come back from? Like a 17 point deficit in the fourth quarter. I think Peyton Pritchard, smartest man on the court, dishing it to all of his stars on the floor. You know, here we go. Boston up 2 0. What do you think, Jonah? How, how, how did you see this series going? And then like, what did you think of the game today? Yeah. So I guess to start off with, I did have the Celtics winning this series in six and where I want to start with how the game went today is just how well Boston defended Kevin Durant because before the series started, I was talking with someone about just how well equipped the Celtics were to defend Durant when you've got all these guys who can switch on to him, be it Grant Williams, Al Horford, Jason Tatum, mm-hmm. obviously as the base assignment, but then you have guys like Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown. And um, the person I was talking about um, this series with um was concerned about the Celtics' lack of length. And I think certainly that's the case. Like Grant Williams, Marcus Smart, like not not the lengthiest guys in the NBA. But realistically, what it comes down to is Kevin Durant is a seven-footer with a lanky with lanky arms and a high release point. Like very few people are blocking his shot, which is ironic because I think Tatum's blocked him like three times in the series. But yeah, most people aren't blocking his shot. But I really don't think that that's necessary to guard Kevin Durant. Like, what the Celtics have been able to do so well is be physical, get up into him, and just make him take uncomfortable shots. Like, you don't make Kevin Durant uncomfortable by putting a hand in his face. You make him comfortable by getting him off balance, not allowing allowing him to get to his spot, just not giving him that comfort food, which is like driving to the baseline and pulling up, um, falling to his right. And... The Celtics have not allowed him to get to those shots all series. They're doing a very good job contesting from the side, which is something Kevin Durant struggles with more. He always shoots worse when people are contesting him from his side as opposed to in front of him. So I just think schematically the Celtics have approached this matchup very well and the players have executed. And that's part of the reason why KD went 4 of 17 today, including 0 of 10 in the second half. Yeah, dude. Boston's defense is so scary. I mean, even though I don't, I don't even. It doesn't even honestly matter that they are playing small. Dude, everybody it seems like on their team just plays hard defense, and then they literally have Depoy on the floor. Wasn't wait? So was Marcus Smart? Was he the one that was sharing minutes with Peyton Pritchard? Yeah, well, Peyton Peyton took his minutes in the oh, second half. That's a killer. <laughs> but dude, well, I think they just wanted to get more shooting on the floor, which makes sense. Yeah, but they didn't really... Okay, honestly, though, it is kind of scary how Brooklyn, like, they can have bad games from their main dudes, but then you got, like, guys like Bruce Brown and stuff. They stay in games. Mm -hmm. And they did a good job of that in the first half, I thought, kind of leveraging the attention that Katie and Kyrie were getting. And they were getting guys like Bruce Brown and Goran Dragic going a lot Seth Curry was knocking down threes in the second half. And so some of the Nets role players were able to get loose and have big games. But ultimately, like without the transcendent scoring of Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving, the offense just really bogged down in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So you 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 went with Boston in six. I think that my selection, since I've seen two games, now Boston's up 2-0. Would it be crazy to say Boston in five, bro? I don't think that's crazy. I'm going Boston in five, okay? All right. That's what I'm filling it out right now. Boston in five. So should we just like work our way up the ladder like Bucks Bulls? Sure. Okay. What is the, is there game three going on right now or is game two going on right now? This is game two right now. Okay, big facts. So we got game two going on. 
it, obviously that doesn't really matter, but it is worth noting the Bulls were up 63-49. I mean, obviously by the time this podcast is out, the result is already going to be done and the Bucks could very well come back and win this. But like, I think that regardless of what happens in this game, I'm still going to go with the freaking... I'm going to go with Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks-Boston matchup is going to be fire, dude. How many games do you have the series going? Okay, say the Bulls win tonight, all right? Let's go Bucks in five and Boston in five. Both of them were just one game away from a sweep. That's why I'm going. All right. And I had Milwaukee winning this <laughs> series in four. I just thought having Vucevic as the rim protector going up against Giannis Antetokounmpo and really having no size on the floor outside of Vucevic, that seemed like a big problem. I thought Drew Holiday was going to be able to take either one of DeMar DeRozan or Zach Levine just completely out of the game. And I just thought there was going to be too many like structural advantages for the Bucks that Chicago would have to overcome. And so that's why I picked Bucks and for the offense. I haven't watched a minute of this game too so far. So I'll have to go back and see the first half like later tonight or tomorrow and see what's going on. But in game one, the shots just absolutely were not falling. I wasn't a big fan of Mike Budenholzer's rotation. He's definitely treating this like the regular season with a lot of bench minutes and that sort of thing. And it really seems like Milwaukee has yet to kind of settle into these playoffs, but um, maybe they'll drop a game. But my, my pre playoff prediction was bucks and four. So that's, that's what I'm going with. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you're going to be right, but I don't know. Okay. Toronto versus Philly. Philly's already up three. Oh, I mean, this series is basically toast. We just, we just, Jonah just watched freaking, uh, so MB nailed the game winning three ball in OT. Right. Let's go. Right. It was a tight game, though. Okay. Gary Trent, your boy, had a good game. OG yeah. and Obi had a good had game, but first, it just isn't enough. Yeah, he had his first good playoff game of the series. Going into this one, I had Raptors in four or Raptors in six. Sorry. I didn't think it was going to be a sweep. I had Raptors in six. You did? I you had the Raptors win? Mm-hmm. Oh damn! I just thought they'd be able to make um, Joel Embiid uncomfortable, show him a lot of bodies, turn him into a passer. I I thought James Harden would not have a single advantageous matchup to attack. Like I don't really think there's anybody in the Toronto starting lineup that James Harden would have an advantage against going one on one. And I think that's pretty much borne out. He's had a great passing series, but um, he hasn't been much of a scorer. And then on the opposite end, I thought Toronto would just be able to get enough points on the fast break to squeak out low scoring wins. And um, like James Harden and Joel Embiid, I didn't really see them getting back in transition to stop the Raptors. The Sixers are kind of notorious for being a poor transition defense. And then I just thought Nick Nurse would have such a coaching advantage going up against um, Doc Rivers that the Raptors would be able to make the adjustments they needed throughout the series to to get um, some close wins. But no, that has definitely not been the case. I definitely underestimated how effective guys like Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris would be this series. And just the physical dominance that Embiid has had over the Raptors team has just been um, striking. And especially Embiid's just played with so much effort this series, sprinting down the court, getting low post positions so often. Um, He's just been a complete force to be reckoned with. And um, the Raptors have just had no answer for that. And so, yeah, it seems like Philadelphia is going to win this series. And so this is definitely one I got wrong. Okay. You want to go to Heat Hawks? Sure. Okay. I'm just going to go Miami in five because they. I think that the Hawks are obviously going to win one game, but the Heat, I mean, they're just, they're basically like, they're kind of, I don't know. They. I feel like they have like the, Best of both worlds, too, like Boston. They can also score, but then they also have incredible defense. Yeah, I went Heat in five as well. Um, I thought the biggest matchup in the series would be Trey Young going up against Bam Adebayo. You know, Trey loves to get to that pick and roll, but when you have a guy like Bam Adebayo who can switch it every time, it just makes that nearly impossible. And so it always just was going to be a matter of where the Hawks offense was going to come from. I thought maybe Trey could get some stuff going in isolation against like a Kyle Lowry, but that hasn't really been the case. Like the heat have just like pretty much schemed him out. And then their offense has looked a bit rusty at times, but dunk was able to carry them through game one and Jimmy Butler just detonated in game two. So they've, they've found buckets where, where they've needed to. And so 
I, I still think Heat in five seems like a pretty, pretty good pick right now. Yeah, I know. Have you been watching like every single game of every series or trying your best? No, I've watched every game of every series. That's insane, Jonah. It's like How? it's like three or four games a day. How do you do this? I wake up at five and start watching basketball. <sighs> I could never. How do you care this much about another team besides the Blazers? Like, that's so mind-boggling to me. I am disappointed that the Blazers are out of it. <laughs> three or four years from now, the, the Blazers will be back. Yeah. yeah don't, don't worry about us. Okay. So we've got, obviously, we've got Miami. Then we've got playing Philly. So the one and the four. And then the Bucks in Boston, three and two playing each other. That's going to be fun, dude. Do you just want to finish out yeah, the and- east side? Yeah, I will say that on my bracket, I had the Heat playing the Raptors in round two. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you want to go Bucks boston This is going to be a fun series. Yeah. yeah. So I had the Bucks. I had the Bucks winning this one. I think a lot of this will come down to whether Robert Williams is able to come back, and if so, how will he look? But if Robert Williams doesn't come back, I just feel like we've kind of seen this before back in 2019 when the um, – Celtics really had no answer for Giannis Antetokounmpo, especially in transition. You know, I think in the half court, they could do okay. I think in the half court, Al Horford's a pretty good matchup for Giannis. But if if this turns into a defensive series and the Bucks have to like, and, or and the Celtics have to find a way to stop Giannis on the fast break, I just don't know um, who that's going to be. And then on the other end, I think Drew Holiday can do a pretty good job against Jason Tatum. I think this will be kind of an ugly series. But I yeah. just went Bucks and six. Bucks and six, really? Yeah. Dude, I don't know. What am I gonna pick? I'm gonna say I'm gonna do Boston and seven, dude. Boston and seven. All That'd right. be wild. Okay. I could see that for sure. This series is a complete toss up, I think. Okay. I, yeah, I'm going Boston and seven just because I'm in love with Boston. I think I don't know. They're a sleeper, dude. Okay, so that's a, that's a good pick. Philly, Miami. I mean, like, Philly's hot, though. Joel Embiid's a savage, but I don't do... Okay, what are your thoughts? I I had Miami in seven. Miami in... Do you, you think Philly pushes it all the way to seven games? Uh, that was back when I had Toronto in the second round. Okay. But still in general, though? I I would have to think more about Philly against... What do you mean you got to think more about it? Okay, well, do you, does it depend on if they sweep the Raptors or what? Yeah, I just I just need to think about the matchup more. We'll we'll talk we'll talk about that later. Okay. Well, I think that I guess Dude, I honestly have no idea, bro. The Heat are good. Philly's good. Both of them gave the Warriors problems. That's a good gauge on whether or not they're good or not, am I right? Mhm. Okay. Um, dude, let's go. Let's go. Both of the semifinals, they go to seven games. I'm going to say Miami beats Philly in seven games. And oh, but also Miami, Miami can kind of, they kind of like, can like, I feel like they could choke, dude. Really? <laughs> I don't know. They beat. They lost to a Warriors team that didn't have Andrew Wiggins, Clay Thompson, or Steph Curry or Draymond. I think. That's true. I, and I Jordan Poole ran in good. there and dis- dismantled them. Yeah, I wonder who Eric Spolster is going to fight this time. <laughs> yeah, because Jimmy Butler lost his marbles. <laughs> that game, dude. For that, I'm saying Philly in seven, just for that reason, dude. Okay. Imagine yeah, I went Miami in seven against Toronto. So I have Miami against Milwaukee, and you have Philly, Boston. So I got Philadelphia no versus Boston, East Coast bangers. Let's go. The the atmosphere at those games would be wild. <laughs> it's gonna be toxic. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Who who do you think would come out of a Boston Philly series? Boston. Okay. Who's stopping Embiid? Horford. Horford's Allie. always done a good job against Big him. Al. Yeah. And okay. they'll probably have Robert Williams by that time. How many so games? They can have Horford. They can have Horford guarding and beating like Robert Williams loading up on the weak side. I, I think Boston would be able to do a really good job. 
Plus they have Udoka, who's a defensive genius. He'd come up with some good game plans. Yeah. How many games do you think that series would be? Pick, pick this for me. Honestly, honestly, you pick it. You pick it for yourself. But no, I'll also, also know that um, that like these first few games like have been Joel Embiid coming off of like a week long rest. Like he's fresh right now. I think by the time he's like a month deep into the playoffs, we might be seeing a bit of a degraded player. Yeah, a hard fought seven honest, game series against Miami could wear him out. I would honestly go Boston in five. I put Boston in six, yeah. But Boston in five is a good pick. But that was I I had I had Bucks Heat in the conference finals. Um and so this would be the third year in a row. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen that matchup with <laughs> I I love that. I, I love these rivalries where we see them like several years in a row. I think yeah. I think that's fun. For sure. Um but I, I went I went with the Bucks. Okay. So you got the Bucks in the finals, obviously. I've got Boston. It's gonna be sick. Hopefully, Boston finally gets there, dude. I mean, when what when was the last time they were in the fi- in the finals again? Wasn't was it in the when was it? I think like two thousand. I think like two thousand eight or nine. Damn. No, two thousand nine. When were, when were they in the conference finals? Oh, in the bubble. Yeah, in the bubble. I was just about to say that. Okay, sick. So we got Boston. They, just be. They played Miami that year. Oh yeah, Jimmy Buckets. Yeah. Okay. Here. All right. So Move I'm, on to the I'm West, not. baby. The only the only side of the of the bracket that really matters. Just to recap, though, I've got the Bucks. You've got the Celtics coming out of the East. Yes, sir. Two very good picks, I would say. I'm liking Boston. The they just are so. There's just something about them that just seems special, and I think I know who they're going to play in the finals. And I, JT has like the X factor of a of a guy who's the best player on a championship team. And then Jalen Brown's not afraid to just pull up from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who do you like in the in the one eight in the West? Let's go, NOP in seven games. Oh, <laughs> could you imagine, dude? I mean, yeah, I could definitely imagine now. That would um, be wild. I did I, I went Suns in five. Um, they I just thought like they they're such a cohesive team, and like the Pelicans have a lot of weird players who have like severe strength and severe weaknesses yeah. like Jonas Valanciunas, like Jose Alvarado, Herb Jones. I just thought they'd be able to like find ways to exploit those guys. And Monty Williams is such a good coach, and I thought like Ingram and CJ are like so. Um, such good like tough shot makers that they'd go off one game and like New Orleans could steal one but I thought Phoenix would dominate this series but um now that there's no Booker and um if I can just say the Suns last night were alarmingly bad that's the worst I've seen them look since honestly I can't remember but in the fourth quarter they were just giving up transition bucket after transition bucket because guys like Jackson Hayes and Herb Jones were just outrunning everybody down the floor and it it was shocking to be honest, because that's like the antithesis of like what the Suns have been for the past two years. So last night was an eye opener. And the fact that Booker's gonna be out now for a while um gives me pause as well. I think if I had to repick the series, I would go Suns in seven. I still think Phoenix finds a way to win. But I'm definitely That's not still as insane that you push it all the way back. <sighs> what am I gonna, what am that's I insane. That, that it can just one guy going out can just push it all the way back to seven games. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's Devin Booker. I know, but if Steph's out, I still feel like we would get past the Nuggets. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, exactly. That's six man of the year right there, dude. Can you believe what are your... Jordan Poole didn't even get a free... He didn't even get... Did he not get a vote for imp- uh, most improved player? Or he didn't even finish in the top three of that? He's not in the top three. That's so lame. Name a better player than him. Um, you mean a more improved player? Yeah. Um, my pick was DeJounte Murray. I feel like DeJounte's been pretty solid, though. Do you think DeJounte Murray Look, last year was better than Jordan Poole? I think he was. Yeah, wasn't he hurt a lot, though? Yeah. Okay. DeJounte? Yeah. 
Yeah, but no, I, I think he was definitely like more established. Yeah, I agree. Who who won it this year? I don't even know. Uh, it's between Dejounte, oh, John Morant, and Darius Garland. Isn't Darius a rookie? Well, no, he's a second uh, year guy, obviously. Third. Duh! Could you imagine a rookie, a third year guy? Imagine mm-hmm. if a rookie, dude. I'm so stupid, but okay. I I, I was he's, getting he was like the same. He has the same class as John Zion. But yeah, do you want to make predictions for this Grizzlies series? Memphis, I mean, Tim, Timberwolves in seven, bro. A lot of people are picking Minnesota. Um, this was one of the series I was most confident about picking. Um, I guess not most confident, because obviously I was like more confident that the Bucks would win or like more confident that the Suns would win. But this is just a series where I had a very strong idea of how it was going to go. And I think game two kind of solidified that for me. The Grizzlies have just way too many advantages over the Wolves for Minnesota to overcome. Uh, Minnesota is the second worst offensive rebounding team or defensive. Re- Minnesota is the second worst defensive rebounding team in the NBA. Memphis is by far the best offensive rebounding team. Min- uh, Minnesota is the second worst rim protecting team and they are the very worst rim protecting team in the minutes that Cat's been on the floor. Um, being the worst rim protecting team going up against John Morant, that seems like maybe a bit of an issue. Um, Minnesota allows the most um, allows the most fast break opportunities in the NBA. Memphis has the best fast break offense in the NBA. I just thought Memphis is Memphis is too athletic. They're too big. They play too hard, and they're just going to run Minnesota off the floor. And Memphis looked a little bit rusty in Game One after having the week off, but. Mm-hmm. In game two, they settled right in and really just dominated. And so I think that I think the Grizzlies are going to end up winning this one in six. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree with that. They could even maybe. You think they could get it in five too? You think they could rattle off three straight? Yeah, I I definitely think so. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just really want the Memphis to lose, just because that'll be like the equivalent of like the Dodgers losing to a different team, because no matter how bad the Dodgers are, they're always going to beat the Giants in the play in the postseason. Yeah. And then that that's basically what Memphis is to Golden State. Memphis it just seems like they have our number, bro. No matter what happens, they always beat us, even without John. You know, they 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 definitely have had your number recently. But I think if you gave Steve Kerr like four games, like a seven game series to yeah. just sit down and figure them out, I think he could. Like that's- Memphis Memphis is like tough to play in a one game situation because they like get so many steals and they get so many fast breaks and so many offensive rebounds. They're just kind of a weird team. But I feel like Steve Kerr could kind of like solve them if he had like a whole series, you know. Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that and when we do our second round predictions. Um, yeah, so- I just it's hard to imagine a team with the, the current Warriors squad. It's hard to imagine a team beats them four times. So you you really want to stick with the Timberwolves? Yeah, so I've got uh okay, no, then yeah, I'm gonna stick with Minnesota. So who you right. who do you got between Dallas and Utah? Um, I had Utah winning that one in six. Okay. I just thought um with no Luca, I just didn't really think um I didn't really think Dallas was gonna be able to create um reliable offense. I know that Utah gives up mid rangers, like they run people off the three point line, they have Gobert at the paint. And so mid-range is kind of the only thing left. And I know Brunson and Dinwiddie are elite mid-range shot makers, but I just didn't think Dallas would be able to live off of those. I am a bit intrigued by this lineup. Dallas has been rolling out the Dinwiddie, Brunson, Bullock, Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Kleba. That was absolutely lethal in game two. I thought game two was just an incredible coaching job by Jason Kidd. He really, like, he really honestly came onto the scene that game for me. Like That was a coming out party for Jason Kidd was game two of the Jazz Mav series. So I'm very interested. This is probably the series that I'm like most excited to watch going forward is this Jazz Maverick series, especially because now Luca might be coming back. But going in, my prediction was Jazz in six. Yeah. I know. I, Jalen Brunson, didn't he drop like 40? Yep, 41. Dang, yeah. son. I know, he's Kleba so good. Eight threes. Damn. Yeah, I, I'm going with Utah in six, though. Okay. Just like you. And we already gave our predictions for the Warriors series. We both had Warriors in six. Yeah. So I've got Utah versus Minnesota, right? And then 
New Orleans versus the Warriors? No, you've got Utah versus New Orleans and Minnesota versus Golden State. Oh, yeah. Wait, so the seeding doesn't... Wait, okay, wait. The seeding doesn't, like, matter? What's up? Yeah, it's not like it's not like they reorder the teams after each round. Oh, okay. Okay, so like the bracket's set. Like yeah. the four the the eight teams. Okay, sick. So we'd be playing okay. Wait, why is that? What do you mean? It's just like March Madness, right? Because isn't wouldn't the Warriors be the highest seed remaining? Yeah. So why wouldn't we play the eight seed? Well, because it's like you said, like the bracket's already set. Yeah, that's stupid though. Don't you think? I'd rather... I'm trying to think if I'd rather play Minnesota or New Orleans. Minnesota honestly might be a better matchup. That seems a bit easier. I'd rather play New Orleans, guy. New Orleans, they can just... I feel like New Orleans can just like ask more questions of Golden State than Minnesota could. Okay. But um, yeah, doesn't matter. But you, yeah, you have. I love how you pick the seven and eight seed. That uh, that's. Um, Has that ever happened before? No. <laughs> well, I, maybe it has. I'm gonna guess probably not. <laughs> but yeah, Utah against New Orleans. Who do you have? Gotta go Utah. You know. Okay. I don't know how many All games right. though. Probably like five, honestly. Okay, so so the team of destiny kind of meets their demise in round two. <laughs> I guess so. I, yeah, both both of the both of the uh, a seven and eight seeds they don't make it out of the second round, obviously. And I I had I had Phoenix against Utah, and I went Suns in five. I forget if I had Suns in five or Suns in six, but I didn't think it was going to be that close of a series. Yeah, I thought like getting Chris Paul and Devin Booker attacking a drop coverage would just be absolutely lethal. I thought Booker would have like no shortage of players who he could attack like in isolation. I thought Mikhail Bridges was going to be able to take Donovan Mitchell out of the series. And I just thought that Phoenix is the better coached team. And so I really didn't think that one was going to be very competitive. Yeah. So, and then Warriors Grizzlies. I had the Warriors in that one. Basically what I talked about. Um, I think um, the last few times we've seen these two teams match up, at least in the playing game, um, it just hasn't, it hasn't really been like the real Warriors team. Like if memory serves, didn't Steph have like a terrible game and Dylan Brooks was hounding him all game, I guess too. So that could be credit to the, to the Memphis defense. But I just think this three guard lineup is just, so powerful that Golden State will be able to get offense because you'll have to hide John Morant on somebody. And either Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, or Steph Curry will just absolutely light him up. And then I think they can figure out enough stuff on defense. Like, they're such a smart team. They're not going to allow uh, Memphis to just run it down their throats. You know, Steve Kerr wouldn't allow that. The Warriors are just too prideful. They're too smart. They take too much pride in defense. So that's just not going to happen. They're a wonderful defensive rebounding team. And so um, I, I – tr- Draymond Green, like, I don't think the, the Warriors don't have, like, a guard like Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards has done a very good job of stopping Jaw at yeah. the point of attack. I don't really think the Warriors have anybody who can do that. I just think once Jaw beats whichever guard it is, like, I think I trust Draymond Green to, like, be the back line of defense and, like, make whatever play needs to be made. And so I think it would be a close series, but I, I went Warriors in six. Yeah. All I know is I just hope somehow Memphis loses this series. But it's probably it's so unlikely. And then if it, dude, if, the, if 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 it ends up being Memphis versus Golden State, that's a seven game series, bro. And game seven would be in Memphis. <sighs> oh baby, I don't know how that series would go, bro. Okay, I'm just not even gonna think about it. We'd say Minnesota clutches up. We play Minnesota. We get rid of them in five. Easy, easy, easy. You're not you're not even gonna pick Golden State in four. Against Minnesota? Mm-hmm. No, there's gonna be some random game where like Anthony Edwards drops like 
45 points on us and we lose. Anthony Edwards can drop 60 points all, every game for all I care. I think the Warriors would still sweep him. The, the Warriors would be like putting up 160 on a nightly basis. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I did. I think we played him early in the year and lost. I don't, I don't think remember. that would be a com- I don't think that would be a competitive series. I, th- I think that. Yeah, would well, be. dude, five games. You just drop one game. We, we just play the mop up lineup. We can start them one game. I was, fun. I was, I was so intrigued by game two of Warriors Nuggets. Like, I watched it. I watched it initially. It was fantastic. It happened. And then, and then the morning after, the morning after, I went back for seconds. <laughs> I watched. Well, you did. You the, watched it a whole thing twice. The third quarter of that game is just so like it was when they scored 70 points in 18 minutes between the second and third quarter. It was just so jaw droppingly good. Like it was Jordan. It was like I was standing on. It felt like I was standing on top of Mount Everest and like watching an avalanche just descend onto like some small like campsite. (laughs) That's quite the analogy, my guy. I mean, that's what Mike Ballone is feeling like. He's like one of those village people standing watching that avalanche come down at him. There's nothing you can do about it. Isn't it crazy? Exactly, yeah. yeah, that's what, like, there's just nothing you can really do about it. No matter what. If you've got I mean, Steph, Jordan, Clay covered up. I mean, think about, and like every time they've gotten Jokic in pick and roll, and credit to Jokic, I think he's really improved his defense. I know I've like really been critical of him on this podcast, but I think he's yeah. actually stepped up his regular season defense. He is just so slow. Like yeah. Kevon Looney's gotten some easy dunks because Jokic mm-hmm. just can't get out on pool and then get back in time to stop Kevon no. Looney. Like Jokic is just getting burnt to a crisp out there. Yeah. And if you think Jokic is bad, Carl Anthony Towns is going to get exploited even more next next round if if Minnesota does win, which which they will not. But um, yeah, the Warriors are looking pretty dominant offensively, and when you combine their dominant offense with arguably the best defender in the entire NBA, like I just I don't I don't know who's beating these guys. Like it, this is a runaway freight train right now. I know it's so much fun and. It's just fantastic how many other guys eat just because there's so many guys on the court. Like Andrew Wiggins had, I think he had like two wide open three balls. Just you can't forget. People just forget he's there. And it's so funny. I I will say Bielitz has given, I've been impressed with the job Bielitz has done as a post defender in this series. He, he was the one warrior who I thought had a pretty bad game. Hey, I'll, I'll say one thing though. Yeah. Him and Jordan Poole have a connection. Jordan Poole slings it to him on two or three occasions, and he got easy layups. It was fantastic. Do you remember? Do you remember the sequence in the third quarter where Bones Highland ran two consecutive pick and rolls, and Nemanja Bjelica fouled him on two possessions in a row? <laughs> no, <laughs> I and don't remember. The Warriors. Yeah, this was this was one of the things I noticed when I when I do I remember him fouling one day, yesterday. Um, okay, what? And and then yeah, like Steve Kerr after the first one, I think he realized that having Bielitsa come out and try to like defend um Highland wasn't gonna work. Yeah. But for whatever reason, Nemanja didn't make the adjustment to this new scheme, and so he came out again and fouled him, and then <laughs> Gary Payton was yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I know. That Gary P- Payton sequence though. When he yeah. stuffed Joker and then Joker was pissed on the next possession and tried to lay like three hard screens on him. He misses all the screens and then he gets the ball down low and then freaking Gary steals it from him again. He was flamed. It was great. And then he slaps him on the booty and then he wants a technical from Gary. <laughs> Gary, so- Gary Payton is a nice luxury to have. Like they don't even yes. need to play him. But if if they get if they get to the if they get to play Memphis in the second round, if there's ever a point where like Steve Kerr is just like, oh man, I, I've had enough of this John Morant guy. Yeah. He can just put Gary Payton in the game. He's a nightmare. He yeah. even guards fives. Like he swatted the crap out of DeMarcus Cousins too. Or okay, somebody. Well, yeah, he I don't I don't really think one on one. He does have some wonderful health defense. Oh yeah, health for sure, defense. obviously. Yeah. 
there's a little yeah. bit of a height discrepancy there against typical yeah. centers. But. This, this is, this is, he's still not like Marcus Smart guarding people in the post, but yeah, he's just a wonderful guard defender right now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's incredible. Yeah, he's just an insane playmaker on both sides of the ball. So what does that leave us with? Uh, you have Utah against Golden State, and yeah. I have Phoenix against Golden State. Big facts. All right. Give me yours. Um, I want Warriors in seven. Wait, who do you who do you have playing this again? Is a, the Suns, and this okay. is a complete toss up. Now that Booker's health is in question, I think it becomes a bit closer. But like, this is literally just like a fifty fifty thing. Um, yeah. But I it's just think three. going back, going going back to the Christmas Day game, which was really like the only time when we've seen him healthy, because the first matchup this series, the Warriors beat Phoenix. But Booker got injured in like the third quarter, I want to say. Right? Yeah. And then, or no, Phoenix beat Golden State, but Booker got injured. Did they actually? No, yeah, they still beat us. Yeah, but then yeah. in the second in the second game, Booker hadn't come back yet, but you guys beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then in the third game on Christmas, everybody was healthy, right? Except obviously not Clay. Yeah. Any of you guys beat them. And so yeah, it's gonna be a close series. I just I just feel like the Warriors are like running a marathon right now and they're gonna get into the last mile and they're just gonna break out into a sprint. And I just feel like there's a gear we haven't seen them tap into yet. I agree. Where they're like where they're like having the um pool, curry, Thompson, Wiggins green lineup playing like twenty minutes a game and they've tightened the rotation. Like they haven't even tightened the rotation yet. Like they're still playing like five bench guys every night. Like even before well, just because we garbage time. are up by so much. Like we haven't, we haven't seen peak warriors yet. And I feel like we've seen peak suns. Like, I feel like, I feel like that. I don't, I don't really see what the suns, like, I think the suns have played all of their cards. And I think golden state still has a ton left in the deck. So I, I think golden state in seven, but that'll, that series will be an all out war, especially if Booker ends up being healthy. Yeah. It's going to be wild. I don't know. Very who, good coaches. Oh yeah, yeah. I just I I do think that the Warriors they have kind of tapped into that. As you, I don't know. It it's it just been a different feel the last couple games. You know, obviously. Oh, yeah, but I, yeah, yeah. There's still another I, I, I level. Think they've definitely stepped it up, but I I still don't think this is as high as they can get. I think yeah. I think they can get even better. I agree. If they're playing Utah, well, how many games do you think that would be? Um, five. Yeah, I'm going like five or six against Utah. I don't know. Might as well do six. Have the Warriors finish it out. Oh wait, no, because the Warriors would have home court advantage. I forgot. Yeah, so yeah, like five games. I think. Yeah, I think Warriors five games. Okay, so that leaves with you've got the Bucks and Warriors. Yeah, and I've got the bo- I've got the Celtics and the Warriors. That would be an absolute grinder. Both of those. Yeah. Tell me why the Warriors get past the Bucks. Well, first of all, I think it starts with um, Giannis. And I feel like having Draymond and Kavon as like the back line going up against Giannis, he's not going to get easy buckets against those guys. And so yeah. I think that's kind of the first point in the Warriors' favor. I think the second point is they can take like Mike Budenholzer out of like his comfort, just block or drop defense with Burke Lopez. Like Burke Lopez will not survive in this series just because they'll be running too many screens for like Steph Curry and Paul and Thompson. They'll like try to get them out on the floor and it's just not going to work. Yeah. Um, and so those are kind of the two like primary things that I see going in the Warriors direction. And then outside of that, I just think that Steve Curry is kind of not a better coach, but I think he's a more aggressive coach. And so I just think he'll be like one step ahead of Budenholzer. And I think, the thing that I really like about the Warriors is that they have all these like weird players coming off the bench. Like if if you need somebody to just lock down a guard for a little bit, you have you have Gary Payton. If you want to have like a supercharged offensive lineup, you can bring in like the elites at center. Like Iguodala and Otto Porter are both like really good defenders. If you ever just want to go small with a really like switchable like versatile defensive lineup, you have those two guys. Like the Warriors just have like so many different like flavors on the bench and so many different like things they can try which i think is a luxury in the playoffs especially if you have a coach like steve kerr who kind of 
likes to gamble and sort of take risks. I agree. Yeah. I think that it would probably go. Did I say it was going to be seven games? I thought it would be a good series. Yeah. 100% Hundred percent, the Bucks series would go seven games. I think the Boston series would also go seven games, maybe even six though. Just because if the Warriors have a seventeen point lead, unlike the Nets going into the fourth quarter, and you keep Jordan Poole, Clay, and Steph in, it's going to be hard to come back. But also, Boston, what do they hold the Warriors to? Like the least amount of points they've scored all season. Yeah. Yeah. So something like that. That could be. That was the game Curry got hurt, right? Yeah. So that I don't know. I think both of the. I think it would definitely go seven games, but I'm still sticking with the War Dubs, the Dubs, baby. I have no idea who I would pick if that series came to be. I would. I feel like Boston matches up better than Milwaukee against Golden State. Yeah, isn't that so weird? How you th- you would you have the Bucks beating Boston, right? Yeah. But then, if Bo- like you think the Warriors would get by the Bucks easier than Boston, but the Bucks get by Boston, it's weird. Yeah, styles make fights. Exactly, <laughs> the classic line <laughs> stands the test of time. Okay, so Golden State Warriors. Who's your, who's your final? Who's your finals MVP? Draymond Green. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Draymond Green as well. I, wow. I think, he's, I think he's gonna play great defense against Giannis. And adding that to the resume. Yeah. What about JP3 though? I just, Dude. Okay. Who who do you think would be a bigger factor in them winning, Jordan Poole or Draymond? Oh, JP3, because his number is three. At, yeah. at first, I thought it was like Jordan Poole the third. <laughs> I, was, I was really confused. The third Splash Brother, last name Poole. So many people are going crazy because of that. Sorry, what were you saying? What was the question you asked me? Oh, the question? It was, who do you think would play a bigger role in us beating Boston, Jordan or Draymond? Against Boston. Um, I mean Draymond. I think. Yeah, I feel like no matter what the series is, Draymond just such an intricate part of our team. It's just not exactly. the same without him. It, if Jordan Poole, for whatever reason, just goes ice cold and starts sucking, like you still have Clay and Steph. Like, yeah, Jordan Poole's not like so important, but like no matter what, like Draymond is the Warriors' defense, and so. Hundred percent. Well. You guys hear, heard it here first. Golden State Warriors, you're gonna get it. Get, we, I said it from day one. Day one, baby. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think. I, I, I think I was a little bit concerned about where we would be, but I still thought that we were gonna make a run. All you know, every year, you think you're gonna make a run. Even when we had uh, what, what <laughs> the year after we had uh, remember. Omari Spellman, Alec Burks, Draymond Green was playing with a bunch of just people that he has no idea even exist on planet Earth, and I expected them to be fine the next year, and they got better. No. They did get better. Yeah, no, because there wasn't there COVID. No, and then, they yeah, they missed, they missed the bubble, and then that next upcoming season, they were fine, and then we lost to Memphis, and now we're here. Yeah. You got to admit, last year that they they did do better than you expected them to do. They, didn't they win nine of their last ten games last year, and then they ran and then they lost to Memphis, and then they lost to the Lakers. They ran out of steam because Steph was going on a tear. That sounds right, but yeah. I, I, they lost to the Lakers and then to Memphis, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, they lost to the Lakers because Draymond <laughs> missed the lay-in to send it to like OT or to win the game, maybe. Or that and that was then, the Grizzlies game. No, Draymond missed one against the Lakers too. I remember. And oh, did he really? He definitely missed one against the Grizzlies. I know that. Yeah, no, wasn't there like a stupid turnover by Pool that ended the Grizzlies game? Yeah, that yeah. was that was an overtime though. In regulation, at the end of regulation, it was tied, 
and Draymond had like a layup going down the middle of the lane and he like missed it and then it bounced off to the left. Wasn't that the Laker game? No, that was the Grizzly. Game. I'm tell I thought the Oh man, what a dude, I swear to God he missed one against the Lakers. He might have. The, the Lakers game was when LeBron saw three hoops and shot at the middle one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't wait for tomorrow's game. It's gonna be sick. Which and I've I've always said like that's not very impressive because like if you see three hoops, obviously <laughs> you're gonna shoot at the middle one. It would have been like it would have been better if you said like two. I saw two hoops or something. Or five or something. <laughs> well, even like five, if it's an odd number, obviously you just shoot at the middle one. I feel like if it's an even Oh number, yeah, then, fags. Then it's like more difficult. But yeah. Yeah, I guess you should have said two. That would have been way better. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it sounds stupid saying Okay. Yeah. So I, I think the Warriors We'll see. Maybe being in front of the home crowd will <laughs> rejuvenate the Nuggets, but it probably will. Um, yeah, I I think the Nuggets will win one game in Denver. But I think if I they do win a game, it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, I do think I told you this. I think Steve Kerr needs to stop playing the three guard lineup. Don't don't give Monty Williams any more film. Don't give Taylor Jenkins any more film. The Grizzlies series is over. Just like, just kind of just kind of like hold hold your horses like like shift put the car down a few gears you know what do you do to stop it though like what is he going to do with more film like what what like what is it get what's what, what's going to happen i don't even know i couldn't tell you you'd have a job in the nba if you told me yeah probably okay the only team that could stop it was boston so why does it matter if phoenix knows well, I'm just, I'm saying that now, but like, and even if you can't stop it, I'm sure there are things you can do to slow it down. Well, we'll the only way to slow it down is if the Warriors just are having a terrible shooting night. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about these future Warriors series more when they get here. But I I think we've made a lot of accurate predictions about the Nugget series. Yeah, I know. I thought we did a good job too, and we still have yeah. we still got right. two more games left. Yep. Do more, baby. Let's go. Okay. Thank you, Jonah. Yeah. No, thank you. This is a blast. I'll talk to you <laughs> Good night, my Enjoy guy. the game tomorrow. Yes. I, I cannot wait. The games are so, so much fun, dude. But, okay. Yeah, they are fun. Bye-bye. Even though they're blowouts, they're still fun blowouts. Dude, blowouts are the most fun because I'm watching Giants games and Gi- Giants baseball is literally torture. So, it's like nice to have something where I don't have to worry in the fourth quarter, you know? That's good. I'm glad you found a nice stress to release for the Giants. <laughs> Yes. Okay, bye-bye. All right, see ya.